Hi guys, Bart Robley here. Welcome to lesson number two uh, of 2017. Today I'm going to expand upon the lesson that I gave a couple weeks ago, lesson number one from 2017, on utilizing molar, the molar sticking technique, and how to apply it to the drum set. This is the first video of mine on molar. There's a million of them out there, so I'm just kind of giving you my version of what has worked for me. Um, I would suggest if you haven't seen the first video that I did to go check it out because I kind of talk about, you know, molar uh, preparation strokes in that video. And then I talk about molar whips in that video. And maybe that'll shed some light on what I'm going to talk about today. So anyway, the idea is um, how do we utilize that on the drum set? How do we utilize it? to not only, you know, use the sticking technique correctly and efficiently, uh, but really how to use it around the kit and, uh, you know, get our, our, the main things in our drumming better, our groove, our time, and our feel. It's almost become a cliche to say that those are the three most important things to drumming, but they are. So many drummers and great drum teachers talk about it. Having a good uh, command of your time will help create a good feel and a good pocket for the band. Um, so to me, that's what this whole sticking thing and the whole technique thing, you know, where it goes and what it helps, you know, it, it, it helps us create that. So anyway, I'm going to be playing the same pattern I did in the last lesson. So again, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But the pattern is this. It's really simple. It's straight 16th notes. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. I'm going to put accents on counts 1, the a beat of 1, 3, and the a beat of 3. So it's going to be 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. And it's just going to be hand to hand. Okay, so again, that's what I talked about in the last video, and that's what I played in the last video, but now we're going to apply that to the drum set. So in the last video, I had it on the snare drum, had my left foot just kind of tapping, but now I'm going to play it on the snare drum, and I'm going to have my quarter note going on the hi-hat. It's going to sound like this. So if you've never done an exercise like this, or if you haven't worked on your hi-hat and your left foot a lot, um, you know, your left foot is going to want to follow the accent pattern. Your left foot's going to do this probably the first time you try it. It'll be, you know, and the time's moving all over the place. Sounds terrible. And it's kind of tough at first, you know, because for a long time, if you're just starting out, your hi-hat has either held, or your left foot has either held the hi-hat closed or it's opened it or it's gone to your double pedal and gone blah, 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 at the end of a song right so you have a, if you haven't worked on your left foot this is a great place to start so again getting that left foot going against that pattern can be kind of challenging so that that in and of itself is a, is a pretty good exercise now, once you've mastered that, I mean, it's really simple. You can kind of start using your imagination and, and putting it around the drum set. And again, if you've, if you've never done this before, when we start trying to apply to the drum set, the same things kind of happen. We hear a new sound or we go to a new place and our coordination gets all funky. So just practice real simple aspect of putting the right hand maybe on the floor tom and the left hand on one of your top toms. That's gonna sound like this. And I also, I, I really advocate practicing and, and playing with a metronome all the time. So here's, uh, here's 100 beats a minute, same thing on the toms. too awfully challenging you know I mean it can be if you're if you're a beginner but it, you know after a while it kind of gets a little bit easy now what we want to do is we want to put the kick drum in there and what I like to do is I like to put the kick drum underneath the accents so if I do the same thing Tom Tom's kick drum underneath the accents So 
so what I'm utilizing there is I'm really utilizing the molar whips to the toms where I'm picking the stick up and whipping the stick into the drum. I'm also utilizing my prep strokes where I pick the stick up and I get a note when I pick them up. Those are my prep strokes. And I have my quarter note going and then I have the kick drum underneath the accents on the toms. Sometimes we don't necessarily need the kick drum underneath the accents on the toms. You know, your toms might carry and cut through really good, but if you like that, it gives it a nice punch. But most definitely, if you're going to apply the same accent pattern to the cymbals, you want the kick drum underneath, uh, underneath the cymbals for sure. So just building that coordination is really important. Okay, then... Play with the groove, and I always kind of advocate at first just starting out playing like four bar phrases, three bars at a time, a bar of the fill or the or the phrase, you know, and kind of use it as a drum fill and, and, and make it your own. Move it around the kit however you want to do it. So th those are just kind of little coordination builders. But the main thing that I want to, I really want to drive home, and I save this point for last, is this. When, when, when I play what I really think about, I kind of think about, I, I, you know, I'm always following my left foot. When you first, and, and, and most drummers are going to tell you that, they've been playing for a while, they follow their left foot. Um, one of the things that, that um, I think younger drummers, when they first start out, they're probably the thought process is more, well, how can I get my left foot to work along with what my hands are doing? When in all actuality, you want that good solid one, two, three, four. That's your, that's your internal pulse. That's your metronomic pulse. And you're following that. If you play in a band or you work with other musicians, which is what most of us want to do, or what I know what I do, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to play in a great band or playing all the time. And uh, the entire band listens to my left foot to keep them in time. My left foot, a lot of times, my hi-hat, they'll have, if we're playing a big stage and the guys are way out front and the monitors are, you know, you know 20 feet in front of the drum set where they can't, they can't hear it real well, they'll have my hi-hat put into their monitor sense so they can hear it to keep them in time. And that's kind of your job as a drummer is to hold everybody together. So I really feel that working on your left foot, working on your time, and working on that four-way coordination is a big deal. Utilizing molar to play efficiently, that's a big deal. It just everything kind of makes you a better you. So in the next lesson, I'm going to go back to the snare drum. I'm going to use that same accent pattern, but I'm going to use a different sticking and put that on the snare drum and then show you how to use it around the drum set. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. That helps me a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.